official. <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 SNL moments of the century so far. Our jobs are fleeing this country. They're going to Mexico, they're going to China. And I can see Russia from my house. For this list, we're looking at Saturday Night Live's most memorable and iconic moments of the 21st century until now. What's been your favorite SNL moment from the last two and a bit decades? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Melissa McCarthy as Sean Spicer. The 45th administration was, well, chaotic. But the one silver lining was that we could always trust SNL to respond with comedy gold. The choice to cast Melissa McCarthy as former press secretary Sean Spicer was nothing short of genius. Today, when he entered the room, the crowd greeted him with a standing ovation, which lasted a full 15 minutes. And you can check the tape on that. She effortlessly captured his antagonistic attitude, nonsensical explanations, and absurd methods of stretching the truth. That isn't real. No, that isn't real! Oh. Also, props to hair, makeup, and wardrobe for creating this spot-on likeness. Combined with her dose of physical and character comedy, this was a parody for the ages, and indeed won her an Emmy. You lie all the time, your pants get on fire. Why are your pants on fire? That's why I put them out. That's right, Spicy's back, Sarah's out. We were almost sorry to see him go because she did such a brilliant job and we just wanted to see more. Number 9, Haunted Elevator, featuring David S. Pumpkins. This Halloween-themed sketch became an SNL classic thanks to the introduction of David S. Pumpkins and his dancing skeletons. How's it hanging? I'm David Pumpkins, and I'm gonna scare the hell out of you. He's not scary in the traditional sense, but does a great job of freaking out the visitors on this haunted elevator ride. It's hard to believe that Tom Hanks struggled to connect with the character as he plays him so well. Bobby Moynihan and Mikey Day give outstanding performances too. <laughs> the dancing, excellent facial expression, hilarious self-assuredness, and total randomness are priceless. For many, watching this sketch has become a Halloween tradition. Okay, yeah, yeah, and David Pumpkins is... His own thing! And the skeletons are... Part of it! We might not have known who David S. Pumpkins was before, but we certainly were not gonna forget him now. Number 8. Kristen Stewart's Accidental F-Bomb when making your SNL hosting debut, you definitely want to make an impression. I'm a little nervous to be hosting because I, I know that the president's probably watching. And arguably, Kristen did just that, just maybe not in the way she had intended. Her funny and entertaining monologue ended up being overshadowed by an unexpected ad lib at the end. We've got a great show, and I totally care that I'm here because it's the coolest thing ever. Oh! oh. oh. Never come back. She later divulged that she had been reminded to keep it clean, but we guess she just got caught up in the nerves and excitement. No one seemed more shocked than the actress, but the audience lapped it up. Luckily for Stewart, she's in good company. Man, hey! Oh, so! Come on, Sam. It's a bullshit. She rocked the rest of the night and was even invited to host again. Live TV, eh? Number 7. Ashley Simpson Gets Caught Lip Syncing Once again, Ashley Simpson. Picture it. It's 2004, and Jude Law has just introduced musical guest Ashley Simpson for the second time. The music starts to play, and it's pieces of me. And you're thinking, wait, didn't she already perform this one? And that's when you discover that she had been lip syncing. We might have been able to forgive this moment if she didn't then proceed to do an awkward hoedown jig off of the stage. Worse still was when she returned at the end of the show to pin the blame on her band. I feel so bad my band started playing the wrong song, and I know what to do, so I thought I'd do a hoedown. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ashley Simpson!
Simpson's career struggled to recover due to this moment that's forever cemented in infamy. Number 6. Diner Lobster After watching this sketch, it's hard to believe that it took John Mulaney this long to get it on the air. I don't see what the big deal is. It's on the menu. Like, I'll have the damn lobster. Just don't do it. As you wish. He first pitched it back in 2010 as a writer on the show, but it wasn't until he hosted in 2018 that it was finally greenlit. It starts quite simply, with a guy ordering lobster in a diner. And before you know it, you're watching an elaborate Les Miserables parody. Who am I? And why am I condemned to boil a life when all that I have done is live my life? Jean Valjean's in hot water, Closette makes an appearance, and there's even a barricade. It is quite an escalation, but that is exactly what we love about Mulaney's zany humor. Closette, I can't let you do that! It's not your time, it's mine! I love you, Papa. <laughs> oh, I love you too! Now run! Hilariously, the sketch even won an award from PETA. Number 5. Future President Barack Obama Makes a Cameo it's not that unusual for politicians to try and connect with voters through their funny bones. And what better place to do so than Studio 8H? Back in 2007, this cold open saw Democrats come together at the Clinton's Halloween party. John Edwards, I'm so glad you came. I just thought it would be good for all of us Democrats to get together after Tuesday's debate. <laughs> Among their many guests, they're approached by a mystery man wearing an Obama mask. You can hear the audience's surprise when he removes it to reveal that it's actually the real Barack Obama underneath. Hey, great Obama mask. Yeah, <laughs> well, who is that under there? <laughs> Imagine that the former president has accumulated many highlights throughout his lengthy career. Well, you know, Hillary, I have nothing to hide. I enjoy being myself. I'm not going to change who I am just because it's Halloween. Well, that's... that's great. But shouting out the iconic live from New York phrase has got to be up there. Live from New York, it's Saturday night! Number 4. Natalie's Rap if you thought you knew Natalie Portman, think again. What's a day in the life of Natalie Portman like? Do you really want to know? Please, tell us. When she hosted in 2006, she took us all by surprise in this hilarious and badass digital short. In an interview that takes quite a dramatic turn, she sheds her good girl image to aggressively rap about her preferred activities. I know the dudes! You know I'm talking to you! We love you, Natalie! I wanna the contrast of the calm, composed actress we thought we knew with this profanity-filled rage spree is perfection. It's so good that in 2018, she even recorded a sequel. And let's just say that motherhood has made her even more hardcore. If someone could just explain Andy Samberg's Viking outfit to us, we would be super grateful. Number 3. I'm on a Boat, featuring T-Pain Joining SNL in 2005, The Lonely Island was responsible for several digital shorts that went viral. These include their ode to Jack Sparrow, the iconic f*** in a box, and of course, I'm on a Boat. I'm on a boat! I'm on a boat! I'm on a boat! Everybody look at me, cause I'm sailing on a boat! In a send-up of cliches often associated with rap videos, Andy Samberg, Akiva Schaffer, and T-Pain vehemently rap about being on a boat. I'm the king of the world, on a boat like Leo. If you own the show, then you show not me, yo. Shortly after its release, it became the number one viewed video on YouTube. It also peaked at number one on the US iTunes chart, received a Grammy nomination, and even went platinum. We bet that T-Pain was glad to be on board for this one. Number 2. Weekend Update – Stefan's Farewell One of SNL's standout characters of the 21st century has got to be Bill Hader's city correspondent Stefan. Hey. Um. <laughs> hey, Stefan. Uh, are you okay? You seem different. I've had a weird few years. <laughs> Audiences loved his quirky personality, outrageous suggestions, and how easy it was to make him break. In his final regular appearance, Stefan storms off Weekend Update to marry Anderson Cooper. I didn't want to do this here, but I've met someone else, and he's a lot like you, except he likes me for me, 
and we are getting married by Seth Meyers. Incidentally witnessed by many of the characters he described throughout the years. However, Amy Poehler convinces Seth Meyers to go after him, which he does in true rom-com style. Returning together to 30 Rock, they finally profess their love for each other. I love you, Stefan! We were sad to see Hater leave, but glad that Stefan got the send-off he deserved. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. On the couch, there are two sides to every story, but we still didn't see this one coming. You really gotta stop coming over here. What? You really can't keep coming here, bud. I, I know you don't really have a place to stay, but we we got kids. We yeah, have buts. No, no buts. Just gotta stop, okay? Yeah. Donald Glover slash Childish Gambino hosts and performs. Every moment of this episode was just perfection. Yes, I watch you with him. In the night. I love you, girl. Career day. If the cast couldn't keep it together, what hope did we have? Now what does an oil baron do? <laughs> the answer? Crush your enemies! <laughs> Grind their bones into dirt! Make them regret they were ever born! United Way. Probably not the role model they were expecting. Open. Get open. Brad Pitt plays Dr. Fauci. This was actually Fauci's idea, and SNL was happy to follow through. I don't know if I would describe the test as beautiful, unless your idea of beauty is having a cotton swab tickle your brain. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. More Cowbell Ask any fan what quote defines SNL in the 21st century, and be prepared to have more Cowbell yelled at you a lot. A parody of VH1's Behind the Music, this sketch answers the question we'd all been pondering. I'll be honest, fellas, it was sounding great, but I could have used a little more Cowbell. What's the deal with the guy softly playing the Cowbell on Blue Oyster Cult's Don't Fear the Reaper? Well, at least that's what crossed Will Ferrell's mind. The combination of his ever-shrinking tiny shirt and overly enthusiastic performance, paired with Christopher Walken's deadpan delivery, launched this sketch to legendary status. I got a fever, and the only prescription is more cowbell. <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. It's so funny that even the cast keeps breaking. Still, if you see Walken, maybe avoid shouting more cowbell at him. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.